Very good evening. You're watching the 11 o'clock news live from Bahrain International with me, Danielle Deporto. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakir Palace today the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, and the Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali bin Salah Al Salah, along with their deputies and members of the committee on compiling the reply to the royal speech of His Majesty the King, which was delivered during the inauguration of the third session of the fourth legislative term. His Majesty the King hailed the sincere efforts of the Legislative Authority in carrying out its responsibilities and constitutional duties to exercise its regulatory and legislative roles inherent from its constitutional commitment to serve the Kingdom and its citizens and boost the values of democracy that stem from Bahrain's national culture and values. During the meeting, His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to both councils for their ongoing contributions to the overall development process and the promotion of national unity through consultation and coordination. He also highlighted their efforts in fulfilling citizens' needs and developing laws and legislation which prove that the Kingdom of Bahrain is a state of law and institutions. His Majesty also affirmed the importance of continuing to work for more fruitful and constructive cooperation between the authorities to achieve progress and prosperity for the good of Bahrain and its people. His Majesty the King commended the contents of the reply of Shura and Representatives Councils to His Majesty's royal speech, which consisted of constructive proposals and ideas for performance development in the democratic process. The meeting also reviewed various national issues and ways of enhancing institutional processes to achieve goals. His Majesty noted the importance of concerted efforts to meet the requirements of the stage in light of the security and economic challenges facing the region. His Majesty the King expressed wishes of success to all in carrying out the national responsibility of serving Bahrain and its citizens. On this occasion, the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for receiving members of the Legislative Authority. He said he valued the support given by His Majesty to the Legislative Authority and his directives for it to be involved in all matters regarding the country and its people. He added that His Majesty's directives to discuss the state budget in consensus between the Legislative and Executive Authorities reflect his commitment to the development march of the Kingdom. Al Mullah also noted the cooperation between the Legislative Authority and the Government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, adding that this cooperation helps achieve the goals of the reform project of His Majesty the King. He stated that His Majesty's royal speech highlighted the priorities of the Legislative Authority to continue the march of development under the wise leadership. In reply to His Majesty's royal speech, the Representatives Council stressed the importance of His Majesty's directives of reinforcing the values of national unity and avoiding division, extremism and terrorism in all its forms. It also said that His Majesty's praise to the role of the Representatives and Shura Councils will motivate members of the Legislative Authority to further develop the country and protect it against allegations and illegal I interventions. Also in reply to His Majesty's royal speech, the Shura Council expressed thanks to His Majesty the King for his praise of the Legislative Authority and highlighted his support to the values of tolerance and coexistence which contribute to the cultural development of Bahrain. The Shura Council also thanked His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for their continued efforts in carrying out a work program to achieve sustainable development in the fields of education, health and social services. The Council expressed pride in the Bahrain Defence Force and its members who fight for the Arab Coalition Forces to defend the legitimacy of Yemen under the leadership of Saudi's armed forces. <coughs>
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, received at Qutbiyah Palace today the Ambassador of the Saudi of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to Bahrain, Dr. Abdullah bin Abdul Malik Al Sheikh. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince underscored the Kingdom's joint commitment to further strengthen bilateral ties on all levels and to highlight the firm support of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, to brotherly relations. He went on to note the government and people of Bahrain's high regard for Saudi and its pioneering role in supporting Arab and Islamic issues. His Royal Highness and the Saudi ambassador then reviewed bilateral cooperation between the two kingdoms across all sectors. The Crown Prince emphasized the integral role the ambassador plays in developing and reinforcing these ties. For his part, the Saudi ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness's support to further strengthen bilateral ties. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, received today the U.S. Ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, William Roebuck, at Gudebiya Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's continued commitment to further strengthen its strategic ties with the United States. In this regard, His Royal Highness stressed the strength of historic bilateral relations across various sectors. He also noted the United States' role in bolstering international cooperation and coordination, which supports the region's security and stability and lasting peace. The meeting also presented an opportunity to discuss recent regional and international developments, as well as issues of common interest. Information Affairs Minister Ali bin Mohammed Al Ramehi today held a press conference at the Information Affairs Ministry, attended by Finance Under Secretary Arif Hamis and local newspaper editors in chief and journalists to cast light on the Gulf Cooperation Council, or GCC's Unified VAT Agreement and Unified Agreement on Selective Taxation. The Minister said the agreements will not be considered an income tax, but will be applied to goods and services at 5%, although basic food commodities, medicines and medical supplies have been exempted, stressing that the applied percentage in Bahrain is the lowest amongst more than 150 countries that adopt it. He added that the unified VAT agreement will come into effect in 2018, after it is approved by the legislative branch. The Finance Undersecretary said the two agreements have been signed in implementation of the 2015 Riyadh Summit's resolution. He emphasised that the tax will not affect persons with low or middle incomes, and that the list of commodities comprises more than 90 items, whilst basic consumer commodities are exempted. He added that five GCC countries, including Bahrain, have signed the agreement, and that the administrative and legislative work will start soon. He pointed out that awareness programmes will be held to inform the public about the items on the list. The taxes to be levied in Bahrain will be the lowest compared to other countries, he added, affirming that the Kingdom is steadily moving in accordance with common Gulf action. He added that VAT tax revenues are not included in the 2018 state budget because there is no law to support it and that constitutions are being held within the consultations rather are being held within the context of current financial situations to reach a budget capable of promoting national economy. That tax is expected to be enforced by mid 2018. <laughs>